and I don't know if we can speak of this or conclusively answer it, there's a lot of old coal mines in this area. A lot of our neighborhoods, neighborhoods are built on top of the old coal mines. And then I've seen people's heads shaking in the audience. I think that's a, a general concern of what do we know? How, how do we know? Is there a possibility of collapse? Or I think that someone from the ODNR, the geology side, is there a clean answer to that? Or is it an unknown? Again, there's no 100% way to say for sure, but with the level of earthquake activity that we've seen thus far at a uh, four magnitude, we would not expect uh, that type of damage to occur. Uh, if we start getting much higher, uh, then that might be something to be concerned about. So, so to summarize, in the range of earthquake activity we have, a uh, four and below, it would not be a typical for a mine collapse. Okay. Um, this one came out of the, the bucket here. Does the drilling go to the plates of the earth? One more time. Does the drilling go to the to, to the earth's plates? Next question. Typically not. That's uh, <laughs> drilling into that pre Cambrian maybe. That's another thing that uh, we're going to start limiting probably on uh, experience. Please. Uh, here's another one. Uh, what actions would be taken if groundwater is contaminated? Hello, my name is Rick Simmers. I'm the newly appointed chief of the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Oil and Gas. Ohio has a water supply replacement authority if there is a contamination. Um, Ohio has the authority to order a company to cause a replacement of that water supply. Uh, is there a limit to that? You know, the water supply, if there's a, it would, you said the program would replace the water supply? Is that... uh, the way the law is set up, there are uh, two standards while the evaluation is occurring. One, the company can be required to set up an escrow account. Uh, where if a homeowner that believes they've been impacted uh, chooses to bring in their own temporary water supply, they keep receipts, they provide them, then the company is ordered to place monies in an escrow account. Uh, if it's found indeed that the company has caused a problem, the company is required to place and replace that water supply, and the escrowed monies are given to the homeowner for the uh, incurred expenses. Uh, the other way, that it can be handled is during the investigation. Uh, if the homeowner agrees, the company can bring in a temporary water supply while the investigation is going on. And then once the finding is made that a company has indeed impacted the water supply, the homeowners, the state, and the company uh, have to resolve how that water supply is going to be issued or, or replaced. Um, once the landowner agrees on the replacement of that water supply, then the uh, company has to immediately begin to implement that replacement. Thank you. Uh, this is another common question we're getting um, from people who have received some damage due to the earthquake. And they, uh, who bears the financial burden? Of, is it the homeowner, the property? Um, what do we do with that if, if someone has a quake and we can link it back to a well operator? Um, if it's uh, concluded that there was an induced seismic event, an injection well caused that, then there would be liability on part of the company that owned the well that would have caused the seismic activity. So that company would be liable or potentially liable for those damages. Thank you. Uh, why are we allowing documented hazardous waste from fracking fluid to be disposed of in class two injection wells rather than class one hazardous waste wells? Um, the federal government set up the injection program. The federal government came up with federal code that define what waste go into what class of well. Um, Ohio follows the federal code. The federal code says that oil and gas waste of all types, uh, all the liquid waste, are to be injected in class two wells. 
Uh, so it's the federal code set up and established and, and uh, run through the US EPA. And then in Ohio, we run that program for the US EPA. The federal code and then the parallel state code say that uh, these kind of wastes go into class two wells. So that is a regulation that happens at the federal level. That, that was a regu that's a regulation that is in the control of the federal level, the distinction between what we can dump in a class one and a class two level. That's a correct, that's a, a federal law. Uh, Jack, did you have Brief, Briefly, Mr. Chairman, I'd suggest here is a prime example now of how this crazy existing law, which says thou shalt be no stronger than federal law. So if the state of Ohio chose and wanted to voluntarily be stronger, can't do or that is, couldn't even pick off a part or two and move closer to that class of one. Even if the department wanted to, Ohio law is holding us down. We should repeal that law, I suggest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, brief response. Um, Jack and I have known for each other for quite a long time, and I respect uh, Jack and his opinion. Um, Ohio law does not limit us to be more restrictive than federal law. In fact, in, in many areas, we are more restrictive than uh, the federal government. One example is the federal law mandates that a class two injection well be inspected once annually. In the Ohio run program, which the federal government gives us very little money to run their program, uh, we inspect wells not once a year, but on average, every 11 to 12 weeks, and in some cases, much more frequently than that. The, you know, that's just one example of where the state exceeds what the federal mandate is. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just really quick, very quickly, and yep, okay. uh, I see my friend Rick is here tonight, good to be with Rick. I would ask, let's all take a look though, and I'm talking specifically about not a while, not the entire oil and gas drilling statute, but this disposal well class two, and that's how we interpret Ohio Revised Code section 1509.22D as in David. Let's all take another look at that. And Rick, maybe we can talk tomorrow by phone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Th this one is another earthquake question. Our last earthquake was a 4.0 magnitude. Uh, where, at what magnitude do we see major structural damage? gets up to about a five and a higher before we can see real structural damage. That's when we'll expect to see a chimneys collapse, uh, those kinds of things. Now remember, for every one increase in magnitude from four to a five, it's not 10 times the energy, it's 32 times the energy. And if it goes from four to a six, it's 1,024 times the energy. So. So the, this is a logarithmic scale, and, and, but the quick answer to your question is, is about a five magnitude. 